I don't think agencies understand how to create their model. DIY, done for you, a hybrid, how do you ascend? Whatever the case may be, if you don't know how to do that, if you're stuck in a rut, you want to know how to price your services and what to offer, this video is for you. By the way, if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because we got more fire content, hopefully it's fire, content like this coming your way. To handle the objection, basically what you're doing is when they come in, you just go through the onboarding process with them and you really just make it very clear what their expectations should be, how it works, and the okay. scope of work. However, what you're going to find is there's enough people that even though we make it incredibly easy, there's a certain percentage of people that are like, listen, you won my trust. I love what you're doing. Just do it for me. I don't even want to think about it. And it's not that they can't do it because it's difficult. It's just that they don't want to. And a lot of times what you'll find is they're your more successful people. So that's not a bad problem to have. So you as a business owner, and I'll just, and I'll give you an example. So Trevor, Trevor Briggs, um, he was talking about kind of his growth trajectory, right? The same thing he was, cause he was coming into the same exact question, the same scenario. And a lot of agencies find themselves doing this, which is for a specific time within your business and growing the business, you will find that you're only able to serve these people, whoever that is, and the people that fit within your original core offer. But with enough revenue and enough people, you're like, okay, well, I get this many people every single month asking me, I've now found tier two of what my agency is going to do. And a lot of times what we don't realize in our agencies is when we sell them one thing, it's a solution, but it's also a problem. That's the thing that we don't really take into consideration is we are selling our customers a new problem. And I think I've given this example before, but let's say, you know, your wife or your husband or whatever gets you a set of golf clubs for your birthday. You're like, hey, look, I got you this thing. Well, all of a sudden, what do I gotta do? One, I gotta go play golf. Two, I probably suck, so I gotta take golf lessons. Three, well, I can't drive straight. It's going like slanting and all this kind of stuff all the time. I'm hooking the ball, I'm slicing the ball. And so now I gotta buy a new driver. I know this because my dad buys like a bajillion drivers. So when you get into something like this, you're buying a bunch of problems. The good news is you as an agency, one of the ways you make money are by A, increasing your prices and B, keeping people longer. That's really, those are the best ways. So mm -hmm. what can you do? Bring them on with your core offering on the onboarding call, at which point it's time, it, it's time for you to, you know, change your model or, or not change, evolve, add to your model. Mm -hmm. At which point in time that makes sense, you say, okay, Mr. or Mrs. whatever, this is what you bought. It's a DIY suite. This is how it works. You take them through the onboarding. And then you say, at which point in time, if you feel either overwhelmed, you're getting too many leads, you want any kind of help, we have a second package. Here's what includes, boom, there it is. If you wanna talk about that, we can set up a time later to do that. Or if they ask you about it, it's like, oh yeah, here's the price tag. One of the questions is, will it make sense for you to add another tier? Most agencies find themselves adding that in at some point in time. And so just knowing that you're working towards something along those lines, if you decide to, is helpful because you can just say, our model right now serves people who wanna do this for themselves. It's a great cost savings. But if you want to do something like this, we may be offering it in the future. Or okay. maybe you have a third party that does it. One of the things that we did for a while when we were growing this model in my own agency was we were getting that exact same question. And I didn't wanna take the time to bring in a call center train people, do all of that. And so we found a third party call center that was already in our niche. And we said, hey, can we just plug you into this? And we'll modify our prices a little bit, meaning instead of the customer clicking three times to launch the ad, we can click three times, click, 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 done, right? And then they just monitor and make the calls and all the booked appointments. And that was a really easy way for us to go from DIY and to have a DFY model in no time at all. Right? It was a great way to bridge that gap between, because the risk is anytime you grow your business, it's like, well, there's ways to grow. I can hire contractors. I can bring in these different services outside of what I'm doing, or I can have it in house. When you're growing, a lot of times it makes sense to have outside contractors or established, you know, white label partners, whatever the case may be, bring their services in. It's a great way to, to get from, Hey, I'm here. I want to be here. What's the bridge in between plug them in. They can help you a lot of times.